that there. Sexy poster. That's what the future is all about, damn it. Hey guys, it's Poka here. Um, I have finally decided to go over I, uh, Divine Cybermancy. Um, since I've been talking about this game to my Steam friends for a while, but I've never really done anything on YouTube on it before, so I thought I'd just kind of briefly cover it. Um, I totally knocked this game at first. Um, didn't think it was all that great. But that was just because I didn't understand it. Um, and there's a good reason for that, too. This is perhaps one of the most unintuitive games I have ever played. As in, you have to figure out everything for yourself. That's the controls, the menu, your action skills, your special skills, how to damage enemies, um, what certain icons on your menus do, um, just everything. Um, it does have tutorials, but the tutorials are really crappy, include no text and no voice, it's just a brief video of some guy clicking on things. So um, really, it's one of those games where you just have to go in and do a lot of trial and error before you figure out how to work the game. But I've discovered that once you know what's going on in the game, it's actually not a bad game at all. Like, um, I played it for maybe three or four hours when I first got it, and um, you know, I thought it was cool. The graphics were really good, but um, I got tired of it and just kind of let it sit and collect dust for, I don't know, two months, I think. But um, recently I decided to, you know, maybe give it another try. Um, there's not a whole lot on Google you can search for it because apparently it's one of those hidden gems, i.e., you know, wasn't very popular. Just because I think it came out at the same time as um, Dusex did. Or however you pronounce that, you know which one I mean. But um, it's actually really good once you figure it out. And um, that's the whole, whole hurdle behind this game. But um, uh, let's see. People who have played it described it as somewhere in between Doom and Warhammer. Um, graphically and from an environmental standpoint, it's a lot like Blade Runner. Like just the atmosphere is very, very Blade Runner-ish. Um, gameplay, it's like Doom meets, I don't know, COD. Um, it's not PvP though, it's PvE, but um, I don't know, it's weird. It's solid. It's not clunky. Um, what was that one game that I covered that was really clunky? I forget. I did some kind of review on YouTube about a game that was clunky that had just been released. Nether. That's it. Yeah. It's not like that. The, um, the mechanics are solid, actually. And it's very, very complicated. Like, the whole game. The story, the controls, um, everything about the game is very complicated. But once you begin understanding that, it's actually very immersive. Um, it does come with a bunch of cons, which I will cover, and which no doubt contribute to the lack of popularity with gamers. But, um, okay, obviously the first con, and the biggest con, is its unintuitive nature. Um, really, nothing at all is explained when you first start the game. Um, you start out with three genes you can pick from to um, build your character. And they do come with descriptions, as you can see, but, you know, the descriptions aren't, like, all that great. <laughs> but, um, what was I saying? Anyway, you just have to kind of mess around and find what little info you can on Google and go from there. Um, but yeah, it's unintuitive nature is definitely a huge con. Um, second for me, and I've seen other reviews like this, but the second biggest con 
is the enemy respawn rate. They never stop coming. Never. And it's not a matter of you leave an area for like five minutes and come back and they respawn, like Borderlands, no. Like, you can literally clear a block of enemies and take five steps in another direction. The moment you turn around, there will be an enemy there already spawned. Um, if you're unlucky, there's a whole squad of enemies that are spawned. They literally never, ever stop respawning and quick like I've literally had enemies spawn right behind me as soon as I'd cleared that area the respawn rate is a little ridiculous and tends to kind of hinder immersion which you know isn't that great just because I love the graphics so much because I love Blade Runner that was a really good movie and I just love that kind of cyberpunky post a apocalyptic, futuristic atmosphere. And, um, you know, I want to get immersed in that atmosphere, but I don't know, just the crazy respawn rate really is a downer. But, I mean, I can look past that. Um, I guess another minor con would be the lack of weapons. It's definitely not a loot-heavy game. You have, I think by default, you have maybe five or six available weapons and another five, I think, that you can unlock. And that's it for the entire game. <laughs> so, you know, don't have a lot of weapons to choose from. The ones you do have to choose from are pretty cool and have unique properties. Um, that part is nice, but yeah. And um, skills, or stats, I guess I could say, are um, very complex. There's about five different ways that you can boost individual stats. And you start off with, I think, eight stats, eight basic stats. Um, you have another, I think it's 30 or 32 cyber stats. Because basically what you are is a cyber human. I guess half cybernetic, half organic human who has evolved from something in the future on another planet. I don't know, I'm still kind of grasping the story. <laughs> and um, it's slowly making a little sense, but yeah, I still have yet to finish it, so can't really say much on the story. But um, yeah, you have, you have a lot of stats and a lot of substats that you can upgrade um, using five different methods. Um, some are just experience points from killing things. Others, you can up, uh, what is it, upgrade stats by currency. Um, other stats and weapons you can unlock by researching things. Uh, the research option is something that happens when an enemy on rare occasions will drop a briefcase. That briefcase can contain an item that if you research will yield you know, boosts or weapons or armor upgrades and stuff like that. It's pretty complex and I like that part. Um, yeah, I don't know. Another thing that kind of is a meh thing is the whole hacking menu. Um, you can hack people, you can hack enemy turrets, you can hack doors, you can hack banks. Um, I just wish that the hack menu had had a little more of an ex explanation because it's not explained very well at all and the first time you go into hack a door I think which is mandatory in the very first mission you have no clue what you're doing and you're like okay I have all these options what the hell do I do but um, overall if you give it a chance and actually take the time to go through the whole trial and error thing for about five or six hours it can be a good game, and I would definitely recommend it to people. I think it's $9.99 on Steam right now. Um, I would buy it for that price, but I don't know. Depends on really what you like, but I'd say $5.99, $4.99 is a very decent price. I would definitely pick it up if it ever goes that low, which knowing Steam it probably will. 
But um, overall, good game. Um, atmosphere, music, environment. Um, enemy AI can actually be very, very good. <laughs> Um, co-op, you can do, it has co-op too. I think you can have up to 30 or 60 players in one session. And I think the enemy spawns and whatnot will scale to that. So that's pretty, that's pretty insane. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I may go into a little more detail if this sparks interest and, you know, explain this menu and that menu, if people really want to know. If not, you know, this was I, and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Alright. Oh, and I hope they fix Warak soon. I know that's PC only, but the whole shield thing is kind of annoying. But, any poo, um, I'll see you guys later.